Welcome to this special edition of This Week. I'm Lord Nelson. As we round out the year 2016, I sat down with the Head of Office for Political Affairs, Sith Komi, to get his views on the political landscape in South Sudan. We talked about the politics in the country over the past year and what it foresees for 2017. My name is Seth Kumi. I am the Director of uh, Political Affairs for the UN Mission in South Sudan. And I've been at this post uh, for um, two and a half years. Welcome to the interview. Let's start travel by you telling us briefly about what political affairs do. Well, political affairs, our main task is to analyze and the changing political landscape and be able to offer advice uh, to the mission leadership on helping them make decisions regarding the political situation on the ground in South Sudan. So this is our main task. We also liaise with the various components of the mission to look at the situation also regarding the neighboring countries, particularly the IGAD countries, how the politics of the IGAD countries also affect the domestic politics. And I have repeatedly quoted uh, one of the famous American politicians that all politics is local. So our politics here, what we analyze, the local decisions on the ground to a large extent shape the political landscape. But what we have noticed in the years that I have been as the director, the political landscape is always changing. So we always have to revise our theories, political theories, to be able to understand the ever-changing political landscape in South Sudan. What are some of the successes and challenges that you faced in 2016? One of our biggest uh, challenge is uh, the peace agreement. Remember that in 2015 August, uh, the leaders, uh, the political leaders, or the principals to the conflict signed the peace agreement. The implementation of the peace agreement has been very difficult. Uh, there was a big success when Dr. Rek Masha, the leader of the armed opposition, returned. And then uh, on the 29th of April, they established the Transitional Government of National Unity. We were all full of hope. But unfortunately, uh, the situation changed with the July crisis. Uh, we have had this challenge of human uh, humanitarian challenges. We also have the issue of political space, how to come out with an agreement. But overall, I remain optimistic that uh, 2017, uh, the political leaders will be able to place the interest of the country above their own so that uh, South Sudanese will be able to develop their potential. What would you like to see happen with the implementation of the peace agreement in 2016? One of the key things that uh, we in the United Nations has always maintained an inclusive political process because we believe that this conflict that erupted in December uh, 2013 was a political conflict. It was a struggle for power, political power among the ruling elites. Uh, this has unfortunately taken an ethnic dimension because uh, South Sudan has not got, um, has not yet developed the national institutions. South Sudan ha doesn't have a national identity. So these are some of the things that we would like to see. The issues relating to governance, the issue relating to inclusivity, and the issue relating to political space, the issues relating to good governance, and uh, issues that we believe that when the political leaders come together, they would, able, they would be able to create a conducive environment for the majority of the people who are not involved in the political process to be able to continue with their livelihood. And my hope is that uh, we would be able to reach a policy, we would agree on the need for national reconciliation, for truth and reconciliation, for grassroots. Uh, this conflict has poisoned community relations. And we believe that uh, in 2017, my hope and my wish is that uh, all South Sudanese will be able to rise above uh, the animosities and live as Martin Luther King would say, the brotherhood of me, uh, brotherhood nations. Everything that I hope for is that we would have a, a very, very peaceful atmosphere. What are your main priorities 
in line with the mandates in 2017. Now, the whole issue is about the peace agreement, the implementation of the peace agreement. There are a number of areas that we in political affairs are interested in. Uh, first, we are looking at uh, the issue of constitutional amendment, how to incorporate uh, the tenets of the peace agreement into the interim constitution. Uh, this is very crucial. Now, we still do not have the Constitutional Amendment Commission being operational. Then we also like to see the Constitutional Review Committee. Then we would have to see uh, the executive and the legislative branches of government working hand in hand to be able to implement the laws that will guarantee human rights, that will guarantee political space, and that when you disagree politically, that doesn't mean you are enemies. Uh, we all have one objective, to, to wish for the economic development of South Sudan. And unless these political issues are resolved, there wouldn't be a conducive atmosphere for political, for economic development. And this is our wish for 2017. And this is what, in political affairs, we will be working with all the parties, mm, both opposition, and then we'll be also working with our counterparts outside with, through the mission leadership to be able to see how all these people, all these political actors can work together for the betterment of South Sudan. Yes, you hinted about the lack of accessibility of the humanitarian actors to the people in need. How are you going to make sure that humanitarian actors actually reach out to the people who are in need of humanitarian assistance? Yes, uh, this is mainly the work of the humanitarian partners. But as uh, political affairs uh, officers, we would be working with the political leadership to ensure access because this is one of the key issues that is hindering the delivery of humanitarian services, humanitarian, uh, humanitarian work. Access is a major issue and we have signed to ensure with the political leaders that uh, we, they become accountable to their own promises to ensure guarantee unfettered access for all humanitarian delivery. So that is going to be our first focus. And uh, uh, the chief of staff office compiles all the various sofa violations. But as political affairs officers, we'll play our role by engaging the political leadership on the importance of having unfettered access for humanitarian, our humanitarian partners. But that is our main role of delivering and those things. These are people who are better qualified to do that than us in political affairs. Before I let you go, what is your wish for the people of South Sudan this new year? My wish is that all South Sudanese, including their political leaders, will put the past behind them and look forward to a bright future. A bright future that gives light at the end of the tunnel. That South Sudanese will be able to embrace each other despite their political and ethnic difference and they will be able to move forward to build a prosperous nation because South Sudan is endowed with natural resources and also with human resources and I pray and hope that 2017 will be the year that every South Sudanese will be able to lift his or her hand and say I'm a proud South Sudanese. Thank you for joining us on this special edition of this week. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. We invite you to join us in 2017 for more informative shows. On behalf of the Communications and Public Information section of the United Nations Mission in South Sudan, we want to wish you a happy, healthy, and peaceful 2017. Goodbye for now.